right now we're at this weird phase of adoption where everyone's still straddling between USDC, uh, stable coins, and then fiat, right? What I see almost imminently is if I can receive my payment in USDC and I can pay my vendors, my suppliers, my employees in USDC, and it's cheaper and faster than what rails are available right now, why would I then ever off ramp it back to fiat? CoinSub is solving one of the trickiest problems in crypto, recurring stablecoin payments. CoinSub has built a platform that streamlines this entire process. We'll talk to Jasper about how CoinSub works, the challenges it solves, and why it matters for developers and businesses building the next generation of payments. Jasper, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the Builder Series, where we spotlight visionaries transforming technology and innovation with USDC and the Circle Developer Platform. Awesome, awesome. Well, look, let's get started at the beginning. What inspired you to tackle recurring payments in crypto? So I've been in the crypto space since like 2012, buying stuff online. And to be honest, while awareness of it has grown, really the the actual usability of it hasn't changed too much. Probably about 2020, I was working at a crypto company. We were going to launch a subscription service. We give people USDC, we give people the wallets, and we know they have the assets. So we're just looking around seeing, hey, can I just pay my $5 subscription with crypto? We looked around for like 15, 20 vendors. Literally nobody had it. You had the weirdest things like making the people wrap their token, making them use a specific wallet, or making them basically put up all of the subscription money up front. I said, man, this is not viable. I want to be able to one day pay my Netflix with my USDC. Why would I keep going back to fiat if we already got this awesome solution? So that's when my team and I essentially jumped in, tested the solution, made sure it worked across different chains so that pretty much anybody, including if grandma's got like 100 USDC, she can go order her stuff online with it. So I know that Coinbase focus heavily on stable coins, which makes a lot of sense. Why do you feel in general, like as we have this discussion, like that stable coins was such a, a major game changer for payments? And what challenges do you think come with implementing them for things like subscriptions? Most businesses, I guess most people are like crypto, man, but with the fluctuating price, they think it's a scam. They think it's, uh, you know, a get rich quick scheme, not really function. When the USDC comes out and you're like, hey, this is awesome. You know, this is actually practical use for businesses because you can't have a fluctuating price when you're receiving money. I think that opened up the gateway for adoption for actual commerce. But the issue with subscriptions and any kind of recurring payment is that blockchain really wasn't meant for things like this. It's mm. meant for one transaction, one signature, kind of from the security and ownership piece, right? In order for somebody to sign once and then have a subscription actually occur from a technical perspective, you have to build out essentially infrastructure that doesn't, that's not native to the blockchain. And then you have to do that differently based on the different blockchains that are out there, like anything EVM compatible versus Solana versus Sui. All of those have slightly different kind of underlying technologies. So making sure that the end user doesn't have to worry about any of that and the experience works the same way is actually quite a hefty lift. How did you all come to the conclusion of, of really focusing on USDC? USDC as a stable coin is going to be easier to use for your normal consumer. Um, and so that's really where we started was USDC because of its kind of how many people were aware of it, uh, Circle's reputation, and then the ease of use. You know, you describe CoinSub as like this ecosystem and wallet agnostic platform. Could you maybe explain what that means and, and how that works, uh, perhaps on a, a high level, technical level? Okay, so at a high level, you know, there's dozens of different chains, dozens of different tokens, hundreds of different wallets, and this is only going to get worse as everyone wants to carve out their own space. So right. for us, almost think about it like a, like a middleware, is we do all the difficult lift of integrating with all of these different chains and networks and making sure all the tokens function in the same way so that the end user and the businesses don't really have to worry about any of that. From a technical perspective, what it means is that we have a series of different smart contracts that are deployed on all of the different networks, uh, each one catered to kind of the nuances of the infrastructure underneath. And in doing that, uh, we can extend the functionality of these blockchains by offering things like subscriptions, uh, as well as things like escrow or kind of conditional payments to provide all of the functionality and use cases that are currently quite prevalent in e-commerce while being able to integrate with people's current systems of record. One of CoinSub's standout features is a feature as a gas abstraction at, at checkout. For developers who may not be as familiar, can you explain how gas abstraction works 
works and why perhaps it's such a big deal for users and merchants? So currently the state of it is, is you have to have the native token. Um, so for Ethereum, it's ETH, for Polygon, it's Matic, or I guess Paul now, which means that in order to make a transaction with a stablecoin right now, you would have to have two different tokens, your stablecoin, as well as whatever the gas token is, which leads to a problem because that means if I send you USDC, your USDC is stuck. So what gas abstraction enables us to do is enables CoinSub to pay for the gas fee in the gas token uh, on these kind of users behalf, which means for all practical purposes, the user only has to have USDC and for the cost of gas, they can pay with whatever token that they're currently using, which would be USDC, making kind of that an all in one uh, token for payments as well as the infrastructure costs. I'd love to dive maybe a little deeper into the SaaS models and payroll specifically. What benefits of using stable coins for these you know, recurring payments compared to traditional models? Like what would you say would be some of the, the benefits in, in general? Access to more customer segments, right? Especially as the world goes more and more global, right? We, we talked about globalization. It was hot topic 5, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. But something that I've noticed, and I think something that most businesses will notice, uh, especially when you're paying contractors, is that I can employ someone and they can provide services for me, engineering services, con you know, contracted work from, you know, Turkey, from Latin America, from Southeast Asia. But my issue comes when I try to pay them. You know, not everybody has wire transfers that where the, the, the banks kind of are interoperable. PayPal is not everywhere. Cash App's not everywhere. Uh, Wise doesn't work for everyone. So there becomes this issue especially today, where the demand for commerce has now far outstripped the ability for the payment rails to keep up. And so this, this includes SaaS-based models, right? As a SaaS company, why would you care which geographic region someone is coming from? You ideally want maximum consumption of your product and your service. So in this case, it just blasts open the doors for who can essentially who your customers can be. This episode is brought to you by Circle. The Circle platform offers developers tools that equip them with a scalable infrastructure that helps them build with confidence. With a full suite of familiar, flexible, and easy to use APIs and SDKs, as well as regulated stable coins, USDC and EURC, developers can serve users around the world, maintain security and compliance, build confidently, and innovate at the forefront of finance. The future is frictionless. Learn more and visit developers.circle.com. For businesses or developers building these subscription models, I know CoinSub's B to B to C ready framework seems pretty unique. Can you maybe like unpack a little bit of how this works and, and why it's so scalable? Well, we actually say this is like, okay, cool. This is a payment gateway. In reality, underneath are really an interoperability protocol payment orchestration rail. We just had watched so many different companies go forward on one side or the other, um, usually from the infrastructure ecosystem side. But the reality of it is that then you have to find people to actually build the customer facing solution on top of your tech. Like I can't just throw you a bunch of APIs and be like, okay, cool, mom and pop shop. Like, yeah, this is, this is ready for you to accept crypto payments. It's just not feasible. And so what we essentially have done is our underlying technology continues to grow and, and expand into different use cases that are possible. Crypto native use cases like streaming payments or even escrow or atomic settlements. But the reality of our go to market is tackling what's the least amount of time and clicks necessary for people to get their value out of paying and getting paid with crypto. And then as far as the B2B to C side of things, you know, we've solved kind of this technology in these kind of packets of use cases. And then we bundle it up really nicely so that any other fintech provider or payment service provider essentially take our infrastructure and just plug and play it into their own, which would mean that say, you know, Stripe, Stripe, I'm talking to you, uh, you know, you can just go ahead and easily add subscription recurring payments kind of alongside the other offerings that you already have in a matter of say days or weeks rather than having to build out the own team. So, you know, in the gold rush that's going to become crypto payments, we're really selling the picks here. How does this model transform uh, maybe potential competitors into partners? And uh, is, is that an, an important part of, uh, of growing the ecosystem? Absolutely. I mean, at the end <laughs> of the day, the whole purpose of a business is to make is to make money or further the value. Right. And so really, as a business. Your goal is not to develop the coolest tech. Your goal is to make the most money. And so you keep seeing in crypto like the same solution being reinvented over and over um, for people to kind of solve and go to market. So for us, why reinvent the solution? If you have, say, a, a distribution in Latin America and you want to create and, and kind of service them uh, with crypto payments, wouldn't it be the greatest solution ever if you could just 
slap your brand on top of somebody else's infrastructure that they're maintaining and they're specialists. And you can focus on your banking relationship, government relationships, and kind of business relationships. And so for us, that's what makes this super scalable, right? Um, is that we will offer essentially 0.1%, 0.2% per transaction, and then somebody else can upcharge that to 1%, 2%, which is still cheaper than credit cards as essentially part of their own service, which means you don't have to know anything about blockchain. You just have to understand that now you can offer an additional way for, for your businesses and your network to monetize. I want to see how this thing actually works, right? Like I want to see how the USD fly, USDC truly flies, um, but I want to go ahead and test this out. So if you're, if you're open to it, I'm going to go ahead and message you uh, my payment link that I created. And, uh, you know, I, I have my Phantom wallet. Let's see how this works. Let's do it. All right, cool. So I see the link that you've sent me and I'll go ahead and click it. So this is for a one US dollar subscription every 30 days, right? So what you're looking at right now is what the customer will see, whether or not they click a button or a link or scan a QR code. So what the customer does is they'll go ahead and connect their wallet. We detect any of the wallets that you have currently installed, over a hundred different types of wallets. I'll go ahead and connect my MetaMask. And what happens here is that we go ahead and detect the assets that are inside your wallet, right? And so for most users, they think about things as tokens and not necessarily network, right? There's so many networks, which one is this on? They shouldn't have to worry about it. So we know the assets that are inside your wallet and go ahead and show you only the ones that are relevant where you have enough to pay for it. So we'll go ahead and click USDC. And then I only have enough assets on Polygon to pay for this. So I'll click Polygon. A MetaMask browser notification pops up for me to sign this and it signs one USDC every 30 days, no more, no less than that. And the amount will be withdrawn uh, at the 30 day mark. And we also have things built in like grace periods and rebilling. So everything works the way that you would expect it to. Fill out a bit of basic information and then we are off to the races. Um, this starts the processing. It should be done in about 45 seconds or so. And it will have gone directly from my wallet to your wallet, minus a little bit of the haircut for the transaction fee. All right, so while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screens. All right, and there and it goes. There. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, so that was simple. So, and then the way that's set up is that every 30 days will be a recurring payment coming in automatically. That's correct. As easy as that. That was that was great. Worked in real time. <laughs> USDC <laughs> on chain. You, you saw it first. Looking ahead, I mean, what trends do you see shaping the future of USDC payments and, and blockchain adoption? Sure. So right now we're at this weird phase of adoption where everyone's still straddling between USDC, uh, stable coins, and then fiat, right? What I see almost imminently is if I can receive my payment in USDC and I can pay my vendors, my suppliers, my employees in USDC, and it's cheaper and faster than what rails are available right now, why would I then ever off-ramp it? back to fiat. And so that's kind of the the imminent future that I see where transactions are just done on chain in stablecoin rather than switching back and forth. So that's probably the, the, the nearest term shift that I see, which also unlocks the ability for almost anybody to engage in commerce without having to worry about jumping through all the hoops of setting up a bank account and whether or not this bank account will service you or whether or not. Finally, for, for, the, for developers, people listening who are interested in exploring CoinSub, what advice would you give them to get started? Are, are there any specific resources that they should check out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you were able to see for yourself, if you just go to coinsub.io and hit the get started button, you'll be able to test our live product as it is. Um, now for developer side of things, if you go to dev.coinsub.io, it is a um, kind of test net network, so you don't have to use real funds. And then we do have, if you go scroll down to the bottom of our CoinSub website, you'll be able to see some of our documentation, which shows the state of our current APIs and webhooks coming up. Early next year uh, is going to be our full kind of enterprise API, which will enable anybody to essentially become a reseller of our same infrastructure and cut and paste little pieces and or cut and paste pieces of it uh, into their existing platform. Listen, you can check out CoinSub's website, technical documentation, audit reports, learn more. We'll make sure to share all those links in the show notes. Finally, Jasper, what are some of the exciting updates or milestones that you're looking forward to? You mentioned exchanges coming up soon. Anything else? Yeah, we've got some very, very large pilot programs in the works for Q1, probably some of the largest fintechs in the world. Uh, so this will be an interesting kind of emergence of crypto into mass awareness. And then beyond that, we want to make sure that the customer experience is, is exactly as easy as it is for any other payment method, which means coming up soon, you'll be able to pay with any token on any chain 
uh, and then the merchant won't have to worry about it, right? So this means you could pay with your fluctuating price tokens like a Bitcoin or Ethereum, and the merchant will still receive stablecoin on their network of choice, thereby widening the checkout to capture as many people as possible um, so that the merchant can have as much conversion as possible. And then beyond that threshold is where we get back into kind of crypto native solutions that the world hasn't quite seen before. Again, things like built-in escrow or even the ability to kind of do peer-to-peer -peer trades, right? As we see more and more tokenization of real world mm. assets, deeds, access to information, you know, we're not just a payment orchestration rail, we're really just a transaction and data orchestration rail. And so we'll be able to move beyond just payments and go into, you know, the triggers that would say transfer someone's card deed from one wallet to another, um, give access to people's credit score, credit reporting related things. Look, Jasper, thank you for joining us today. It's really been a pleasure and really fascinating just learning how CoinSub is simplifying uh, USDC payments, unlocking, uh, honestly, a ton of new opportunities for developers and, and businesses all over the world. I mean, look, to everyone listening, if you're building something and want to explore CoinSub, check out their website, their technical docs. Once again, we'll make sure to link them uh, all in the show notes. This has been the Circles Builder Series. I'm Sam Seeley, and I'll catch you next time. Take care. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Circle Builder Series. Check out the show notes for links to any resources mentioned in today's show. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a five-star review and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode.